He is alive for last thousands of years. He has been wandering here and there for countless centuries. After all, what is he searching for? Sometimes he comes in daytime like an illusion, sometimes stealthily in night hours. For some, his coming is like a piece of story. But many people believe having seen him with their own eyes, a divine bodied person, pestered with leprosy, asking for some oil to soothe his wound. He was there in Mahabharata times, and even today he is present. Yes, we are talking about Ashwatthama, the son of Guru Dronacharya of Mahabharata times. Those who have seen him say that he is alive even today. Our history is too old. Still, Mahabharata didn't get proper mention in the history. That's why some of the stories remain merrily as a myth. One of such stories which are lost in the intricacies is the story of Ashwatthama being alive or dead. But different people agreeing on the same type of incident. Can it merely be a myth? So many secrets are hidden in the Asirgar fort which is located in Madhya Pradesh, 20 kilometers away from Burhanpur. People have different opinions about these secrets. People here say that Ashwatthama comes here in the Gupteshwar temple situated in the district and after the worship, he leaves. No one can see him. It is believed that he comes in the early morning, worships the shivling and leaves before anybody waking or coming to temple. Despite this, some people claim having seen Ashwatthama. But if all that is a myth, who is the person to worship the Shivling every morning before the locks of the temple are opened? After all, why flowers can be seen there on the Shivling every day? Offered water can be seen. Nobody is allowed to stay here in the Asirgar fort after the sunset. All the gates are locked. Entire fort is closed. In that case, how can anyone come over there? It is only possible when somebody has divine powers. Those who have seen Ashwatthama say that he is bigger in comparison to a common human being. Having deep wounds on the body, he is very tall. He is suffering from leprosy along with different parts of body. His forehead is always bleeding. In order to heal these wounds, he is seen asking for oil from people. It is said that these wounds are from Mahabharata times. Ashwatthama was severely wounded in the battle and that's why the wounds have not healed yet. Even today, he is wandering in the jungles, serving the curse given by Lord Krishna. After all, what had happened during Mahabharata with Ashwatthama? that he is alive even today and wandering here and there. Death doesn't come to him, despite his own wish. To know all that, we will have to visit those stories where it all started. Actually, when Ashwatthama was born, his first cry was similar to the kneeling of a horse. That's why he was named Ashwatthama. He had a gem on his forehead as a part of body by birth. This gem protected him from monsters, weapons, disease, gods and snakes, etc. In the battle of Mahabharata, Ashwatthama was on the side of Kauravas, like his father Guru Dronacharya. He was a brave fighter who showed valor in the battle of Mahabharata. Because of his bravery, Pandavas seemed to be losing the battle. Guru Dronacharya and Ashwatthama together had almost defeated Pandavas when adopting diplomacy. Lord Sri Krishna suggested Yudhishthir to tell a lie. A false news was spread in the battlefield that Ashwatthama has been killed. The fact was that an elephant named Ashwatthama was killed. To confirm the truth, Yudhishthir was asked to corroborate. He said, Ashwatthama has been killed. But was it an elephant or a guy? I don't know. That very moment, Lord Shri Krishna blew his conch. And as a result, Guru Drone could not hear the last words. Extremely sad with the news of death of his son, Guru Dronacharya gave up his weapons. Taking benefit of this opportunity, Drishtadyumna beheaded him. When Ashwatthama came to know about this perfidy, he saw red and decided to adopt the same perfidious strategy. He killed all the five sons of Draupadi in the dark of night 
when they were in deep sleep. Getting furious on this, Arjun started chasing Ashwatthama, who suddenly targeted Brahmastra at Arjun. Ashwatthama knew invoking the Brahmastra, but was ignorant of calling it back. To stop it, he steered the Brahmastra towards the womb of Abhimanyu's wife Uttara. Getting extremely angry, Lord Shri Krishna nipped off the gem from the forehead of Ashwatthama, saying that killing innocent children and women is sin and cursed him to stray on the earth till the end of the Kalyug. As he lost his gem, he lost all his powers too. And it is believed that even today his forehead has been bleeding continuously since then. He has wounds from the time of Mahabharata, which have not healed yet. Aimlessly straying here and there, Ashwatthama has spent countless centuries. Nobody knows how many centuries are still remaining to spend. How did you find this video of today's? Please do tell us by leaving a comment. If you liked it, please press the like button and share it with your friends. See you with a new topic. This is your friend Neha Agarkar. Namaskar.